Okay, so we are learning today about direct creation, which has a tie into yesterday's mullet lesson, I promise. So it says, compare the two situations below. Christine really wants a new iPad. Hers broke after dropping it off the balcony during a super fun Barbie bungee activity at school. She has no money, however, because she just spent it all on a new calculator. Luckily, she gets an allowance of $15 each week that she plans on saving. So they want us to fill out the table, graph, and equation to show how much money she has. Well, if she just spent all of her money, that means week zero, she's got zero dollars, right? She just spent it all. The next week goes by, though, and she saved 15 week, $15 from her allowance. Another week goes by, so she's got $30, 45 60 and 75 okay? So I transfer that to my graph. At week zero, she's got zero dollars. At week one, she's got 15 30 45 60 and 75. I'm going to connect these with a the line because it does go on forever. If she kept saving, she would keep um, gaining money, right? That one's a little wonky, sorry. So now the equation. This is one thing that you all struggled a little bit with yesterday doing your mullet activity. Remember, you can always try to find a slope with your table. This is plus 1 and this is plus 15. So my slope is 15 over 1. So I've got y equals 15x. And then my y-intercept is obviously 0, 0, so I don't really need to add anything to the end. So my equation is just y equals 15x. Okay? So there's Christine's story. Now let's talk about Bobby. He really wants a new iPad as well. His broke after dropping on the track outside during a super fun touchdown activity at school. Luckily, he has $40 saved in his piggy bank. He plans on saving his allowance of $15 each week to help pay for the rest of the iPad. So again, table graph and equation. Well, he's a little bit different. Week zero, he actually already has $40 saved. Okay? But then he keeps adding 15 to it just like Christine did. So now he's at 55, plus 15 is 70, plus 15 is 85, so on and so forth. Okay? We'll put it on our graph. At week zero, he's actually up here at 40. Week one, he'll be at 55. Week two, he'll be at 70. Week three, 85. And week four, 100. And then 115. Again, connect with the line. Sorry, my smart board's off. And we can now see his. Okay, so again, an equation, right? Got to find the slope first. This is plus 15. This is plus 1. So my slope, 15 over 1, is just 15. But then I have to add the y-intercept. This one actually does have a y-intercept, right? You can see it in the table right here at 0, 040 or over here on the graph. So we need to add a plus 40. Okay, so there's Bobby. So now it asks us, what are the two, what do the two situations have in common and what was different? Well, one thing that was in common was the slope, right? They had the same slope of 15. That's because they both saved $15 each week. That didn't change. What was different, however, was they had a y-intercept. Okay, sorry, whiteboard. So the y-intercept was different, right? Christine's was 0, 0. Bobby's was 0, 40. So they started in different places. So now let's look at their tables and see kind of what happens here. Let's compare the data in the two tables, which set of data is proportional. Y'all remember that proportional means that the um, fractions simplify to the same thing. And so proportions when you set two fractions equal to each other, right? So let's just take some of the data points out of Christine's, right? I'm going to put the y, 15, over the x, 1, okay? That should be the same as the next one, y over x. And it is, right? This simplifies to 15. This simplifies to 15. If I keep going, if I do 45 over 3, that still simplifies to 15. So I know that this one is proportional. Okay? If I look at my right-hand side over here, and I try Bobby's data, okay? And I take each one of these. Let's say we put 55 over 1. Then we try to set it equal to 70 over 2. We try to set that equal to 85 over 3. Well, this simplifies to 35. This simplifies to, what, 28.3 repeating. This simplifies to 55. These are not equal, right? This is not proportional, OK? Now, what I do want to remind you is that both situations are still linear. I'm sure you have some writing to catch up, so I'm just going to talk while you write. Uh, both situations are linear. Both have a slope. Both have a y-intercept. So just because one's proportional and one's not doesn't mean that it really changes their um, mathematical validity, right? 
One is just a proportional, the other one's not. It's just a special case. Just like you've got quadrilaterals, right? Quadrilaterals have four sides. We've got squares, but we have not squares. Just because it's not a square doesn't mean it's not a proportional. So, uh, it's not a quadrilateral. So we've got proportional and non-proportional linear functions, okay? So because Christine Zeta was proportional, we know that her situation represents a direct variation. Okay. This is just a special type of linear function. Um, it does have a fancy definition. I'm walking to get my paper. Okay. So direct variation is a linear relationship where the two variables increase proportionally. I'm writing this. A linear relationship Where the two variables increase proportionally. Okay, I'm going to put an example on here. So an example would be when one doubles, so does the other. Just because it's not a direct ratio doesn't mean it's not still linear. But let me go back and show you these two tables again. Okay? Use a different color. I'm looking over here on Christine's. When this x value doubled, right, to go from 1 to 2 is doubling, so did this side. It also doubled, right? Or you could even see from 1 to 3 it tripled. 15 to 45 is tripling. If you look over here at Bobby's, however, to go from 1 to 2, yes, that's doubling. But to go from 55 to 70, that is not doubling, right? That's just adding a certain number. So when you have a non-proportional situation, they are increasing at different rates. Totally different ballgame. Okay? So going back to this definition, um, when you have proportional situations or direct variations, they can be recognized a little bit more easily than making that proportion. Making all those ratios is a little bit difficult. Um, so one thing you can look for is the y-intercept of 0, 0. Okay? They always have to have a y-intercept of 0, 0. Now you could see it in the table, you could see it in the graph right there, and you can also see it in the equation. All of the equations always are going to look like y equals kx, then there's going to be nothing over here because there's not a y-intercept, right? Um, you can also see it in the graph by looking for a linear graph, it has to be a straight line, okay? If you've got any sort of curve, it's not going to be proportional, it's not going to be a direct variation. Um, what else? You also have to look for that proportion, obviously, right? All of the data points have to uh, simplify to the same thing. So for this one, we've got 6 over 2, which is the same as 12 over 4, which is the same as 18 over 6, et cetera, et cetera. They all simplify to 3. So if it's a direct variation, everything will simplify to the same number. Okay? One thing you might notice is that we have a k in this equation down here instead of an m. Normally it says mx plus b. This is a k. Um, it's a K strictly because this is a special type of linear relationships. They wanted to use a different letter, but really K and M are the exact same thing, okay? And it even says on this next slide, the K in the equation is called the constant of variation. And in seventh grade, you learned constant of proportionality, same thing. Um, it is found by dividing y by x. Okay, in this equation right here, y equals kx, if we were trying to solve for k, think back to whenever we were moving equations around, we would obviously divide both sides by x, right? Those would cancel, and you'd have k equals y over x, like we just want it. So you want y to divide by x every time. Um, and then I was just talking about this. It says this is also the slope of the situation. What is the difference between m and k? Really, um, k is a special type of m. So they're both slopes. m is just the slope of anything. k is just what we use to talk about the slope of a proportional situation. 
But that doesn't mean that you won't sometimes see just y equals mx. Sometimes you will write it that way too. All right, so it says, for each of the following, determine whether or not a direct variation is represented. If so, state what the constant of variation k is. So for letter A, I've got 0, 0. That's important. But I need to make sure everything simplifies to the same ratio. So I've got negative 2.5 over negative 2. That's going to simplify to 1.25. OK? This one, 2.5 over 2, that's going to simplify to 1.25. 5 over 4, still 1.25. So is this proportional? Yes, k would be 1.25. All righty. Next one, I'm going to first check for the y intercept the 0, 0. It's already bad. So this is a big fat no. This is not a direct variation. The last one, I've got 0, 0, so that's good. I just need to check my ratios. 9 over 4, I'm going to try that one because it's the whole numbers. 9 over 4 simplifies to 2.25. And check these. 6.75 over 3 does happen to be 2.25. Negative 11.25 over negative 5 is also 2.5. 2, sorry. So yes, it is a direct variation, and k equals 2.25. Okay? Let's look at these equations. So y equals x over 16. I know that all of my direct variations are supposed to look like y equals kx, right? Well, this we can rewrite as y equals 1 16th x. So yes, this is 1, and k is just 1 16th. This next one over here, we've learned that you can split the 2 up, right? So I could rewrite this as y equals 1 half x plus 8. Well, it's bad, right? We're supposed to have a y-intercept of 0, 0, and this is clearly a y-intercept of 8. All right, continuing on, letter E. I can simplify this, right? y equals 3x. Now I can see, yes, it is a direct variation, and k equals 3. This one over here, I can't simplify this anymore. These aren't like terms, so that's just the way it is, which means no, it's not, because I have a y-intercept of negative 3 there. No bueno. Letter H, yep, that one's good. K equals 4. The next one, kind of hard to tell because we don't have y by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2x and move it on the other side. So y equals negative 2x plus 10. Oh, there's my y-intercept of 10. So no, this one doesn't work. Letter J, again, I need to get my y by itself in order to be sure. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. So 5y equals 3x divide by 5, and y equals 3 fifths x. Well, what do you know? Yes, this one works, and k is 3 fifths. Look at these graphs. <coughs> Excuse me. These are the easy ones because you really just look to see, is it a straight line? Is it going through 0, 0? Well, this one is a big fat yes. This one is not going through 0, 0, so it's a big fat no. This one isn't even a straight line, so it's a no. Alrighty. Okay, these, same idea. We just want to know is it a direct variation or not. So number one up there, well, this mapping again represents points. So here's zero. Its arrow goes up here to negative 12. So that means that at y-intercept is zero, negative 12. So is direct variation? No. Is it a, is it a function? Everything has got one arrow, so it's not cheating. So yes, it is a function. Is it a direct variation for number two? I need to start seeing if it comes to a constant um, proportional relationship, a portion constant ratio, excuse me. So y over x should give me my k. So 7 over 2, that's 3.5. 10 over 3, oh, that's 3.3 repeating. 13 over 4, that's 3.25. These are not constant, so this would be a big fat no. Number three determine whether or not they're direct variations. You'll notice these are stories, so we need to turn them into equations. So letter A, Saul is mowing lawns. He charges a flat fee of $20, and then he also charges five per hour. Made that into an equation, I can see that it's a no. <coughs> letter B, Valerie's making chocolate chip cookies. She adds in two cups of chocolate chips for every three cups of flour. Well, on this one, I don't really have an equation here, but if I picture a table, and I've got like, um, let's see, chocolate chips, and then I've got flour. I add in two for every three. Those would be four and six, six and 12, right? Oh, no, no, six and nine, sorry. 
So I can tell that this is increasing at the same rate on both sides. When this side doubles, this side doubles. So this is actually a yes. Letter C, she earns $10.50 per hour. There's my X. But then it says plus a $25 bonus. So that's a no. Zach eats a cheeseburger that contains 480 calories and Oreos that are 85 calories each. So again, because there's that extra 480 on the end, this is a no as well. All right, now here's where we actually start applying all of these things. So it says, remember all direct variations are written in the form y equals kx. So number four here says that y varies directly with x, and y is 84 when x is 16. What is the constant of variation? Okay, well that just means I need to find k, and I know that k is y over x. So I'm going to put 84 over 16, and I can tell that my k is, I need a calculator, give me a second. 5.25. Alrighty. So then part B says write a direct variation equation. All they're wanting you to do is write y equals kx with that k you just found plugged in. So there's my equation. Now C says using that equation, what would y be when x is 32? Well now I've kind of got like a formula that I can use. So if I know y is equal to 5.25x and they just told me an x, I plug that in. So y should be 5.25 times 32. So I multiply that out. No clue what the answer is. Let's see. I can't find my calculator. Do it by hand, old school. Zero, zero, six, one. 168? 168. All righty. Now, what I did in this box right here is I summarized the three things we just did, because you can kind of follow those same steps for most direct variation problems. So the first step is to find k, right, which is just y over x. Then the second step is to make an equation using that k you just found. And the third step is just to use the equation. So let's practice those same three steps. Five, it says y is directly proportional to x, and y is eight when x is 10, so what's the constant? Again, k is equal to y over x. I'm gonna put eight over 10, which means that k is 0.8, or four fifths, either way. Now it says write an equation, all right? y equals 0.8x. You just plug it in. C, using that equation, what would x be when y is 40? Well, they gave me y, so 40 equals 0.8x. I divide by 0.8. So x would equal 50. Okay. Again, those same three steps you can use over and over and over. Number six, look at the table below. If y varies directly with x, what is the constant of variation? They're not asking us to find anything else but k, so I just need to put y over x. So I've got 216 over 12, or I could do 270 over 15, or I could do 306 over 17, right? They should all be the same because that's the definition of a direct variation. So k ends up being um, 18, and there's your constant of variation. Almost done. All right, I think we've got three more problems. Matt is a speed skater. His coach recorded the following data during a timed practice period. If Matt continues to skate so that his distance varies directly with his time, what is the approximate distance he would skate in 25 seconds? You'll notice that this problem doesn't use y and x. You can see in the table, obviously, because that's just the way they're written, that this is x and this is y. But I did want to point out that they will always say it in the correct order. So when they say the words varies directly, the first thing they say is your y. The second thing they say is your x. So y, the distance, varies directly with its time, x. So when it says, what is the approximate distance he will skate in 25 seconds, we need to go through those three steps. So let's first find y. I mean, find x. I mean, k. Good gravy. Let's find k. So I put the y on top. 50 over 4.5, okay? I work that out, and I get a constant of variation of something weird. I need to get my paper. I think it's got a repeating number. Of 200, no, 11.1 repeating. Alrighty, 11.1 repeating. Okay, so let's make that into our equation now. Y equals 11.1 repeating x. So I should be able to use that for every single future data point that I want. So they want to know about 25 seconds. Well, that's an x. So y equals 1 point on repeating times 25. Okay, multiply those together. And you get this, meters. 
So now we know if he skates for 25 seconds, he should go that far. All right? Another problem, exact same three steps. I know that first I'm going to have to find K. I haven't even read it yet, but I know that's what I'm going to do. The amount of chlorine C needed for swimming pool varies directly with the amount of water. Again, they said C first, so that's kind of like our Y. Then they said water second, so that's kind of like our X. It says if 16 units of chlorine are needed for every 1250 gallons of water, write an equation that represents it. So to find K, I need a Y over the X. Well, chlorine's my Y, so I've got 16 over my X of water, which is 1250. I simplify that or divide, and I get 0.0128. All they're wanting me to do is write an equation. So I've got y equals 0.0128x. Or if you wanted to use their letters, it'd be c equals 0.0128w. Either way. All right, last problem. Here's the mullet connection. So Billy Ray Cyrus, we saw his picture yesterday. He is known for his mullet hairstyle. If his party has a length of 9.6 inches and his business has a length of 4 inches, how long will his party be in a few months when his business length has grown to six inches? So again, here's Billy Ray's hair, right? Horrible mullet. We just learned that his party, that's the back, has a length of 9.6, and his business in the front has a length of four. They want to know what's going to happen in a few months when his business, this part, has grown to six, right? So let's do the whole direct variation situation. Okay, so y equals kx. That's what our, our goal is. Let's do k first. So k should be y over x. Well, we talked about yesterday how we're always going to divide the party by the business. Okay, so his party originally was what? 9.6, and his business was 4. That gives us a mullet ratio, or a constant of variation, of 2.4. Okay. Well, if he keeps that ratio constant all the time, then we can figure out how long his hair is going to be at any point. Okay. So they're asking us about what if his business length has grown to 6 inches. Well, business was my x, so y equals 2.4x is our equation. But I can now plug in that business length of 6 into the x and work it out. So y would equal, let's work it out. 14.4 inches. So we know that his party in the back would be 14.4 inches long if he kept growing at a constant rate. Alrighty. Hopefully you paused throughout this video. You made sure you understood before you went on. Um, if y'all have any questions, I will be back tomorrow. Oh, there's the bell. Food is ready to be served out by the art room. Food is ready to be served. Anyways, um, I will be here tomorrow before after school if you need any help with anything just let me know. Alrighty.